Hello my fellow geeks, I'm Mark and today on Elite Geek I'm going to show you how I am protecting my Anycubic Mono X printer successfully so I don't ruin it. If you look on Facebook, you'll see lots of people have ruined their Anycubic Mono X screens already. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I did to protect mine. I waited until I was successfully printing with it for a couple of days before I posted this or recorded this to make sure it actually works and it works great. I have not ruined mine yet, but I'm gonna show you what you can do if you do ruin yours. So first you see I have Super Shields protectors here and I actually have two of them. The reason I have two of them is there is a recess on the screen, so it's not completely level. So I actually installed two screen protectors. I'm gonna show you some pictures I took as I was going. So first I have a small anti-glare protector that I got for a Kindle Fire. Now I'm gonna have links for all these down below if you wanna get the exact same ones I did. What I did with this smaller protector is I figured out how big the plate needed to be. So you can see here there's a recess where the screen is actually lower than the plate around it. I was concerned if I put a screen protector over the whole thing that this would cause an issue. You'd have an air gap. So I cut this one to size to fit in that recess. What I did was I actually took my build plate and I used that as an edge to cut the screen. Now what I found out after I tried the first one was it needs a little bit of an extra gap. Now it turns out it's exactly the width of my X-Acto knife. It needs an extra space there. So then I redid it, left that space in there, lined up with the sides, and I just cut around the edges there. After that, I was able to apply it to the Mono X and it fit in pretty much perfectly. It's weird because it, it actually is a little bit bigger than the build plate, so that threw me off at first. But then once I got that in there, I got that in, got it pretty smooth. Now you apply this just like a phone screen protector. I didn't get a video of applying it. I'm assuming you all have applied a screen protector to your phone. Now, one thing to point out, these are not the glass protectors. Everybody's putting glass protectors on their phones now, and that's not what these are. These are the old fashioned plastic ones that we all used to use. So you have the plastic one there, you get that in place, and then I use the big protector. Now, this is the one for the Apple iPad Air 10.9, and this ended up being perfect. So then this I applied the exact same way over the entire screen all the way to the edge and didn't require any trimming at all. It went right to the screw downs and that completely was able to cover it without any air gaps, any bubbles. I've heard other people have done this and had bubbles and it didn't actually cause a problem. So then at this point, then I leveled it. I just followed the instructions that came with it. And I know there's alternate leveling instructions, but for all of my printers, the Anycubic instructions have worked great. And now I've printed what, like, 10 plates worth and everything has been great. I also set the power to 80%. You want to do that. So something else I got that I haven't had to use yet is this linear polarized transparent sheet. So this is what you use if you have gotten resin on your screen already and you tried to clean it up and the screen came apart. The layer came off of your screen. That is actually a polarized transparent screen. So I got this just in case, and this would actually replace the bottom layer. If I end up having a problem and I end up resting up my screen, I would not use this bottom layer. I would use this instead, apply this on the bottom layer, and then I would apply the full screen protector on top of it. But you don't want this from the onset. You only want to use this if you've messed up your screen and taken the layer of plastic protection off of your screen. A lot of people thought they were gonna have to replace it. Turns out if you take that whole thing off, put this on, it will resolve the issue for you. While we're at it, the one other thing I have is I have extra FEP screens for the Mono X. I've heard a lot of people have this problem because the Mono X FEP that it comes with is just not very good. But once they replace it, then they have very good success long term with a FEP without having to replace it. So I've gotten a pack here. This is the one I got. Uh, I'll link it down below if in case you want. I haven't had to use this yet, but it comes highly recommended. So there you go. I will update this if I do have any problems, if I learn anything new. One other thing I was prepared for for the uh, print was sticking to the screen, which it's not at all. And I credit that because of the smaller screen that I put on it first. I think it gets everything better level but I also got some three-in-one PTFE lubricant to just wipe down on the FEP. I will do this on the new one if I get it. This just didn't come in time. 
I actually had to buy a case of these in order to get it. So I'm going to be giving away probably 11 bottles of this on the channel in the very near future. No, forget it. I'm going to give away one right now. I'm going to link down below and uh, you can go to Gleam and hey, if you subscribe to the channel and you check out my Facebook page, you can possibly win one of these bottles. Well, two. We'll give away two in the next... Uh, two weeks, let's say. But if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know if you have any problems, if you've seen anything else that works even better than what I've got here, or if this saved your screen, let me know. But I recommend doing this before you do anything else. I never even powered on my Mono X until I got this in place and got it protected. And because of that, and until next time, remember, if you're gonna be a geek, be an elite geek.